Let's take a look at the solution to question two for the final exam for our course Math 1220. We're asked to find the slope of the tangent line to the polar curve r equals eight sine of theta at the point theta equals pi thirds. So if we wanna find the tangent line, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit to the side here so we get a little bit more space to write out here. If we're looking for the slope of the tangent line, we're trying to find the derivative dy, whoops, dy over dx, which if you treat a polar curve as a parametric function, we have to take the derivative of y with respect to theta and divide that by the derivative of x evaluated at theta, where here, remember, y equals r sine theta and x equals r cosine theta. And so taking the derivative here, uh, well, without even knowing what the function's gonna be, if we, if we treat r just as a function of theta, the general formula you can see very quickly from the product rule is you're gonna get r prime sine theta, and then you're gonna get plus r cosine theta as your numerator. And then in the denominator, you end up with r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta. So I mean, without even knowing what, what r is, we get the following. And so we do know what r is. That sounds like such horrible grammar right, right there, right? Um, so r is eight sine theta, so we'll plug those in in just a second. And we also wanna plug in pi, or theta equals pi thirds. So let's plug in that r equals eight sine theta. Uh, the derivative of eight sine theta with respect to theta would be eight cosine theta. So we get eight cosine sine, and then we're gonna get eight uh, sine cosine. That's kind of nice that those actually match up and they're gonna double up there. Uh, in the denominator, we're gonna get eight cosine squared theta, in fact, minus uh, eight sine squared like so, which there are some trig identities we could use to simplify this thing. I mean, the double angle identities are in play right here. Um, in either situation though, we can factor out an eight that's actually gonna cancel out eight over eight, and that leaves behind a two sine theta, cosine theta over cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which at this point you could plug in uh, the pi thirds if you so wanted to. Uh, it's perfectly fine, or you could do you could rewrite this as just sine of two theta over cosine of two theta, if you want to use those identities, whichever you prefer. Um, I'm gonna stick with this latter approach. Uh, if we stick in the pi thirds at that moment, we're gonna end up with sine of two pi thirds. And then in the denominator, we end up with cosine of two pi thirds. Uh, so this is an angle in the second quadrant. It'll reference angles in the first quadrant, which is actually pi thirds again. So we get a negative, uh, well, let's leave be more careful here. You're gonna get sine of pi thirds on top, and then you get negative. Cosine's negative in the second quadrant. So at pi thirds, sine should be root three over two. Um, at pi thirds, cosine is actually one half, so you get negative one half. And so that would simplify to be negative square root of three. Uh, which we then see is option C, uh, for which case we select that one. And so on this exercise, we had to know how to calculate the derivative of a polar curve. And here, when we talk about the slope of the tangent line, we're talking about dy over dx. And really, you just treat this like a parametric curve. You would, If you were asked to find the slope of the tangent line of some parametric curve, we would do the exact same thing except that the function will be given as x equals whatever and y equals whatever. In many cases, you can treat a polar curve as a parametric curve and you'll be just fine in that regard.